Steve Gullion dominates the landscape of South Armagh, shaping both the terrain and the lives of the people living in its shadow. Looking out from its hilltop cairn, spread below the evidence of 5,000 years of human occupation, man-made structures like the cairn itself, Ballykeel Dolmen and hunting lodges, homes and the walls of farmsteads, each charting the history of the people, both invader and the invaded. Through the years, women are ever present in the background, holding families together and assisting their menfolk in the work of providing, cultivating and tending the land, carrying stones in their aprons to build the walls spread out now before us. Backbreaking, tedious work, leaving little time or energy for sport. When organised sports such as the Gaelic Athletic Association first appear in South Armagh in the late 1890s, women are there as always in the shadow of their menfolk, not even worthy of a name, merely someone's wife. It's 40 years later before we find evidence of women playing in team sports such as camogie. There are records of women having made their own frocks and blouses to play, meeting in places such as McAteer's Field in Jonesboro. As reported in the press of the day, this team were forced to play in and subsequently won the County Down tournament, which obviously disgruntled their County Down competition. Others, like Annie Hennessy from Fiohol, learned to play in Liverpool, where so many young women of the area were forced to emigrate to during the 1920s and 30s. Annie went on to become captain of an all Britain team and competed in the Talton Games in Dublin in 1932. Her winner's medal is now proudly on display in the Croke Park Museum. This film documents some of these historic women and their challenges, achievements and contributions. Proud South Armagh women who have helped form the landscape of sport in the area today. Now not only in the background, but shining on their own. I am Kathleen Woods, at present the um, Uchtaron President of the uh, National Camogie Association, Common Camogie Athla. Um, I came and come from a family of 11. So in the evening when the family of 11 and dad, we would have work and the jobs and the chores all finished, we would go down to the front field and it would be hurling all the way. Um, being one of the youngest, the smallest ones were cutting goals. So you learned very early to be tough and to be hard and to be brave. So that was grand. That continued for a number of years until my brothers came home one day and their war trophies were blood that was running down their faces. And my mother freaked out and my father took the, every stick he could find, every hurl he could find, blessed it over his knee and it was flung into the next field. So that was my early camogie career over. Um, as a young teacher, I went to teach in Derry Noose. Camogie had died away there for maybe 12, 15 years. So we resurrected it and got the girls out playing. And um, the wonderful thing about that first team was that four of those girls went on to win multiple All-Ireland Camogie medals in schools and with the county team. Um, I woke up one day as a young mother and realised I was a mother, I was a teacher, I was a wife. I was a cook, I was a laundry woman, I was everything, and Kathleen no longer existed. So I took myself into Armagh, I bought my boots, my gear, my helmet, and I went back out onto the field. And I stayed there until my granddaughter was at the side of the field shouting, Granny, what are you doing? I decided it was time to make a retreat onto the sideline, which I did. Throughout my career, I would say I faced the biggest obstacle was the fact that we as females constantly question ourselves, we're constantly at saying, oh, we can't, I couldn't, that's too much. Are inclined to stand back and let others go forward, whereas we have to train our young females coming up that they are equally as entitled, they're equally as capable and equally as able. 
Um, camogie has changed drastically over the years from the very uniform we wear. Um, when we look at the pinafores and the sashes tied around them and the 40 denier tights and the baseball boots to now the highest tech of football boots, our young women go out uh, dressed immaculately and dressed as female athletes. Camogie in one word is, I have to use two, one is fun and the second one is freedom. Fun because you're on the field with a bunch of girls and you are exercising, you're planning, you're laughing, you might often to have a cry as well, but the fun of it all is immeasurable. Freedom, because once you walk out onto that pitch, you park it all, it, it's all left in the change room and you go out there and you're free from all the hassles and stresses and strains and you just enjoy the game. I was working in the community as a health professional and I had an interest in uh, healthy lifestyles, if you like, in a way, but also about prevention. I think maybe it was more prevention than anything else. Because at that stage, the knowledge about, or the, about the links between lifestyles and health was sort of not great. It wasn't really developed. I honestly thought I was extremely fit because I wasn't sick. And it wasn't <laughs> until I actually started working and looking at the research that it suddenly struck me that my behavior was going to have an adverse uh, outcome for my health 20 years down the line. So out of that came a walking group, but that was sort of just because I was working in the community and I set up uh, programs of, uh, like health orientated programs that I ran from September to Easter every year. And all women, I think I did it for two, maybe two, three, four years. I might have had three men. But you do get women, because women are interested. Um, they're not only interested, they're very, very conscious of health because they know that they have a great influence with their families and they have children and they're just, because uh, we're a nurturing um, gender, if you like, we are interested in things like that. What's best for your family? Also the fact that there wasn't an awful lot of things happening outside the home. So the Binions uh, were actually in their 31st year that, the fact that it's a walking group that has really developed and we've 200 people, it's just great because people, everything changes. People started to change, the whole notion about physical activity changed and you got the research, you get the articles and you got everything. Then people have more disposable time, they could think of maybe having activities outside the home, they more disposable money if you like. And part of the Vinian development was that there was a social aspect to it. We did trips away, we did mountains, but it was against a background of physical activity in the whole country, if you like, developing. In the south of Ireland, there was a very active uh, walk and festival move and starting, but here in the north of Ireland, we had the troubles. How would you get people to come up to the north of Ireland, from the south of Ireland, to walk in the mountains? You had no chance, they were afraid of their life of taking their car up for the first instance, they started coming up because we went down to the south of Ireland and then they knew somebody. We were going to have a walking festival. We would we took buses, their cars were going to be safe, they were coming up to an environment. So gradually you see the, the, the whole arena, if you like, changed. So it's just how things come out of like, small beginnings in a way. Something that's stuck in my head and it's just come into my, my mind now and it was in Finland. And they had slogans. We never had slogans. And I think you've loads of them now, you have these catchphrases. But the one that they had is, take your dog for a walk every day, even if you don't have a dog. Now, I have never <laughs> forgotten that because I thought that was so clever. And that was saying, just get out and go walking. Okay. Anne Murphy was a gifted sportswoman and sports instructor. She played camogie, netball and in later years golf, all of which she excelled at. 
She coached Camogie netball and athletics, in particular cross country, at St Mary's Primary School, Mullaban, where she taught for almost 40 years. In her youth, she was an outstanding Camogie player for her school, her club and county. In 1970, as a schoolgirl, she played centre half back for the first ever team from the Sacred Heart Newry to lift the Curran Uwen Ulla, the Ulster Senior School Championship Cup. The following year, they won again, going on to Crow Park to become the first ever winners and Anne, the first ever Ulster captain, to lift the Curran Skelga. Since 1971, only one other Ulster captain has had that honour. Anne's club was Carrick Cruppen, and in 1972, she helped them to a county senior final. By this time, Anne already held an Ulster Junior title as centre half back with Armagh and had played in an All Ireland final in Crow Park. But her greatest achievement in the field of sport may well not be the All Ireland and county senior medals she won, but her influence on the young people, especially young women, she introduced to the sports of camogie, netball, and cross country. And I remember Mrs. Murphy and our lovely blonde hair. Yes. Because I think she was only teaching school with blonde hair. Yeah. <laughs> and glamorous. And she was very yeah, young. Yes, glamorous. And really young. Yeah. 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 And she demonstrated all the moves. Yeah. The warm ups. I remember the warm ups and the left movements and the next side to side and the shoulder rolls and stuff. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was probably the first organised training and sport that any of us ever did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the first yeah. proper the training. Last. Yeah. 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 And cross country too. It was good. And works for that style. Remember that too? Mm-hmm. I remember. Do you remember? Do you remember we, the boys used to get to play football in Evans and the girls used to have to go and do embroidery, needlework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember going and begging, begging, please, it's not fair. Can we not go and play football too? I think, it must have Master Keaton. Master Keaton said, well, if your teacher says it's okay, it's okay. Me and Susan Master Keaton says it's okay. <laughs> so we went, yeah. And such respect for Miss Murphy. And even the friendships have still evolved, like we're all still friends over these years and all still meet up and you know, it's all due to the team building. Early on, I'd say. People went on to still play netball. Tracy played with the youth club, and these guys played with Sick at Heart. I played with Kiss and Balls. Sorry, Colin. But I taught us all those skills that yeah. carry through no matter where we yeah. went. And it yeah. wasn't just it wasn't just the sports skill, it was the respect for the other people and yeah. the life skills. And, and, oh yeah, it was all life skills. Proper. How to behave when you're on the court and how to behave when you're at school and how to behave when you're off the court. (laughs) (laughs) Initially I played football until I was about under 14 and then I played camogie thereafter. Um, when I played football, I actually played for the boys team. I was the only girl on the boys team. I played for my primary school and then also I played for Fork Hill, um, which would be my neighbouring club. Um, when I was in primary school, I loved to play football. However, um, all I can remember is that I was forced to do sewing and knitting while the boys were outside playing football and I absolutely hated that. Um, And as a result, I now refuse to do any sewing or knitting when the need arises um, because I I still remember that I was forced to do it rather than being outside playing football, which was where I really wanted to be. Um, I played for Drum and Tea Primary School and then later I played for Fork Hill, um, our neighbouring club, as I was saying. I played for the neighbouring club because, well, basically they were the only ones who asked. Anytime we got a write-up in the paper, my name would always appear on the team as L Mulkerns. Um, my my Christian name Lisa was never recorded because obviously they couldn't figure out why a girl's name would ever be on the team sheet. I played on Fork Hill Field the day it opened and I also would have been the first girl to play in drum and tee football field so I'd be the first um, lady footballer to have played on both those pitches. In those days people used to laugh at me for playing football, everybody thought I was mad but thankfully we've moved on and I'm so delighted that we have.
My name is Keith Byrne. I am 10 years old and I'm from Drummond Tea. I love football, both Gaelic and soccer, but Gaelic is my favourite. I play for Drummond Tea under 10s, boys and girls, and under 12 girls. We train three to four times a week with matches at the weekend. Playing Gaelic is when I am at my happiest. It is a great feeling to be part of a team and it is even better when we win. Football gives me confidence and keeps me fit and healthy. I feel very proud to wear the blue and white stripes for drum and tea. I have three sisters and we all play football. No ballerine is in our house. My proudest moment was lifting the winning cup when we won the under 10 blitz and scoring a goal from far out in Croke Park. When I'm older, I would like to play for Armagh at Croke Park. This would be my dream come true. Sleeve Gullion continues to dominate the landscape of South Armagh. However, the place of women in sport has added to the landscape dramatically. With moving out of the shadow of the mountain and men, women are no longer merely pinning the jerseys on the line, but proudly putting them on and playing their part. Making history and charting a new era in sport. Changing the narrative. A sport for every woman to play. Big run!